everyone! Today I have a special tutorial for you. We are painting a botanical mural with acrylics today and I'm going to show you the whole process step by step. A little disclaimer, this is going to be an indoor mural, so if you're thinking about doing a mural outside, this is not a tutorial for you because you're going to need a whole different set of paints and anyway, this is just for an indoor wall. First, let's talk about materials. You are going to need a bunch of brushes in different sizes. This was the largest one I ended up using. This was the perfect size for me to paint the larger areas and this was the smallest brush I used. This is actually, I think, like a watercolor brush. These are the other brushes I used. They are square shaped and they are really good for acrylics. You're also gonna need acrylic paint and for the larger areas I picked this big jug and I had way more than enough. So of course, depending on the size of your wall, how much paint you're gonna need, I suggest you get one of these smaller tubes. This is more than enough for like a whole bunch of area painted. You're also going to need about like two or three pieces of cloth to basically dry your brushes or like clean stuff up because it can be a messy process. You're also going to need a watercolor pencil to sketch and it's very important that it's a water-based color pencil, not wax-based because the wax base is not going to come off the wall when you're done sketching and if you have a watercolor pencil you can just use a damp cloth in the end to just clean out all the sketch lines that you still have left. So very important watercolor pencil. You're also going to need a bunch of containers with lids to mix up the paint and then to be able to use that same paint on the next day so I don't have to keep mixing the paint up every day. And of course you're going to need access to water to clean your brushes and to also clean any mess that you make accidentally. Basically, if you're starting to paint a mural, you should have a color scheme in mind. So in my case, I had red, green, this light brown, orange, and blue. And then from there, I mixed those base colors with black or white to come up with the light and dark tones for those base colors. So choose like three, four, five colors that are going to be the base. And then you can pick a light tone like white and a dark tone like black or dark brown. So you can mix them together so you can get different tones of the same colors and that's how you keep your color scheme organic and harmonious. I usually like to sketch on paper first so I have a better idea of like the drawing itself, what it's gonna be like, the colors I'm actually gonna need, where the shadows go, what colors go well, where. It's always good to sketch on paper first and you can use your sketch as a reference when you're drawing on the wall. Now after you have your materials and your sketch done, we can start painting the wall. So to start, as I said, I was just sketching with the watercolor pencil, I used a white one, and I'm basically just roughly sketching the flowers on the wall, using my drawing on paper as a reference. sketch ready I am able to add the first colors in and this is basically like the mid tone of the drawing also notice how the acrylic paint is thick enough that you can actually create some textures depending on the way you move your brush on the wall so since we're drawing botanicals it's always nice to paint the petals of each flower or the leaves following the lines that they would have like in nature. So basically try to follow the movement of the petals with your brush. So that helps you create a more natural feel to your painting. To use the acrylic paint, have in mind that they dry super fast. So just pour some of the paint you need on a plastic surface or like a plastic container. And you can use the exact amount of paint that you're gonna need for each section of your painting and close the tubes of paint really well so you preserve the consistency and thickness of the paint. Also, if your paint starts getting too thick on your container while you're painting, do not mix water on it because when you put it on the wall, it might drip because you're working on a vertical surface and it, it can create quite the mess. Sometimes my paint was like almost dry so I would add like a little tiny drop of water and just bad idea, just don't do it. Just throw it out and get new fresh paint.
Once you have the base colors on each flower, you can start experimenting with adding some shadow tones. You can either buy a darker tone of that color that you're using. So for example, I was using a darker like purple-ish tone that I thought would go really well with the red and it creates a really interesting color dynamics. Um, and I wouldn't be able to create this tone by just mixing the colors I had before. So if you want to invest in more tones of paint, you can. Or you can just get the red and mix it with like a little bit of black or a little bit of dark brown to get a darker version of that red that you're using. That's 100% gonna work as a shadow. So for now, I'm just adding this shadow tones here to see what it would look like. A very important tip for you guys is that if you're mixing up paint to create your own color, try to make enough paint for what you need so you don't have to mix it up again. So I'm doing the same thing with this orange flower, but I actually struggled a little bit to find the right tone. I ended up thinking it was too dark and I ended up putting more orange there to cover up. And this is amazing about the acrylic paint because it's really thick and you can really cover up the first layers of your paint easily with a few more coats of the paint that you want on top. So it's really easy to cover up mistakes and you can actually redo your drawing as much as you want. After you added the dark tones, you can add even darker tones, which should almost be like just contouring the petals. So like don't add too much shadows on your flowers so it's not too dark. You should just focus on creating a little bit of depth in your drawing using a small brush like this. And this is like just details, but it makes a huge difference in the final result. It really makes your flower pop from the wall. When you're ready, you can start adding the lighter tones and I mixed the orange with this sand, almost white color. And I got this lighter tone for the orange that I thought was perfect for creating the lights in the orange flowers. I'm gonna do the same with all the other flowers as well. I'm also adding the light spots with the sand slash white color, which I don't know if I love at first, but after doing the spots in every flower, I ended up loving the contrast it creates. It almost looks like the flowers, they kind of look like chocolate to me for some reason. They look like creamy. I don't know how to explain, but I, I just really like the texture it created. And if you're asking yourself, well, but how do I know where to put the lights and shadows, right? Well, this is why you should draw this on paper first. Like, I didn't know this by memory, you know what I mean? I was following my drawing on paper, and when I was drawing on paper, I was following reference pictures. So you either use reference photos to guide yourself, or you can draw it on paper first, and then have that available to you while you're painting the mural. And that's how you're gonna know exactly where to put the shadows, and how dark and how light you can go. And this is it, you guys. This is my final mural. This was my first time doing a mural with acrylics like this. I usually used only Posca markers and I did a lot more line work on murals so this was really a new experience for me so that's, that was really cool. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and this beautiful wall. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I actually have a super fun video prepared for you guys for next week so come back next Thursday for more and if you liked it don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment down below and yeah I'll I'll see you next week. Bye.